Good morning, guys. We've got some mostly uh, clear conditions out there this morning, a couple of clouds. Looks like we might be getting a sprinkle right over Springfield right now. Got to zoom in on the radar and see if that's reaching the ground at all. But otherwise, we've got some dry conditions. 74 degrees in Springfield right now. It's 73 in Branson and 73 in Harrison. So a very warm and humid start. That muggy meter has these oranges and reds telling us that it's humid and uncomfortable and sticky out there this morning. So uh, mostly sunny skies at the pool today. A couple of showers and storms will be possible as that weak cold front comes through. Temperatures up near 90 will feel like the middle and upper 90s. Hour by hour, we're looking at a couple of showers and storms possible. Most locations should stay dry. Temperatures will be at or a little bit above average. Mostly dry tonight, then some showers and storms roll through by tomorrow morning into the first half of tomorrow afternoon, and then we keep a spotty storm chance at Wednesday afternoon with that temperature still around 90 degrees. The front that comes through today stalls through the weekend, so we're looking at rounds of showers and storms rolling through with heavy rain and lightning uh, as a threat. The heavy rain uh, will set up close to the front, so depending on where the front stops will greatly determine where the heavy rain goes as well. We're generally looking at one to four inches of rain possible with some localized flooding concerns because the showers and storms will pretty much hit the same areas over and over based on where the front decides to set up camp, right? So that's what we're tracking Wednesday through Saturday. Those temperatures there come down into the middle 80s. We could dry out starting on Sunday. Joe Warren. Thank you, Elisa. Two years ago, Willard voters approved to build a new intermediate school, and that project is now complete and ready to welcome new students. Our Hannah Zettel is live with a tour of the new building that will open its doors on August 15th. Hannah? Well, good morning, Lauren and Joe. The new school here has a focus on flexibility and collaboration. They are finishing under budget and just in time for the new school year to begin. Now, this week, teachers are stocking up on supplies and sharpening their skills as the start of the new school year inches closer. All that's missing are the students. Willard Intermediate School South will open its doors for the first time this August as finishing touches are made on the $19 million project. Principal Stacy Pippen says the new school will make take stress off of other intermediate school building across town, which wasn't able to accommodate those growing number of students. Highlights include a full-size gym, collaborative library, and two STEM labs. The building maximizes space by placing teachers' offices outside of classrooms, opening up workspaces to create a limitless learning environment. You'll see a teacher office. That's something that's quite a bit different here. Um, instead of the teachers having the space in the classroom, we've tried to capitalize on that learning space, and so they're in the offices together. Another bonus of that will allow for a lot more collaboration on their part. Fifth and sixth grade students will be able to check out their brand new school tonight at an open house and ribbon cutting ceremony. But on the other hand of things, new parents and their students are frustrated when it comes to having a new school in town. So parents have expressed a little bit of confusion when it comes to finding out exactly which school their child should attend. The easy way to find out is to first call the county assessor and they can tell you the boundary of your home and then follow up with a call to the Willard School District office to learn exactly which school your child should attend. Important to note also that your summer school building may not be the same as your regular building. Reporting in Willard, Hannah Zettel, Ozarks First. All right, Hannah, thank you for that information. It's also your right to know this morning the man believed to be responsible for the budget truck fatal crash is scheduled to be in court today. 27-year-old Shannon Schaefer will appear for a bond hearing for charges of theft and multiple felonies. Schaefer is believed to be involved in the theft of a rental truck that caused a fatal crash at Campbell and Republic Road on July 18th. Green County Sheriff Jim Arnott describes 29-year-old Andrew Lynch as having no respect for humanity. He's the man accused of killing three people in a car crash over the weekend. We spoke to another woman who was in one of those cars that was hit by Lynch's truck during that chase. She says she's still injured but thankful to have survived. Her name is Jody Bray Mojlin and she was a passenger in another car but is glad her driver saw the truck approaching quickly and he happened to look in the rear view and that's when he, he said, oh no, you know, he's coming awful fast. And he, he jerked to the car to the right as fast as he could. Um, and right as he did that, a split second later is when we were hit. So if he wouldn't have done that, we would have probably been hit full on in the back. 
Andrew Lynch is facing three separate murder charges for the crash. Sheriff Arnott also said his blood alcohol level was nearly three times the legal limit. We also have a traffic alert. That's right. If your commute involves southbound Highway 65, you'll need to find another way around to move there. As we, the first phase of MoDOT's reconstruction started on Sunday, it's closed going southbound toward Branson between the Sunshine and Battlefield exits. So if you're headed home from work this week, expect to see some delays and plan a different way ahead of time. MoDOT's resident engineer Brad Gripka says that the project they're laying, it requires them laying down new pavement on the road. Yeah. Well, the pavement is just getting old. We're having to do more patches, more repairs. And you can see, you can see that it's starting to deteriorate. Just like the last two years, we've had two, two projects of doing the pavement replacement. So once we do this replacement for this next two miles, two and a half miles, um, we won't have to touch it for hopefully for another 50 years. There are alternate options for you in this story when you find it over on OzarksFirst.com. In some more local news, tonight you can join the Springfield Police Department for National Night Out. The family-friendly event kicks off at 5 p.m. at Metter Park. Festivities will include music, free food, family games, and will feature a hot dog eating contest with professional eater Randy Santel. A softball game between Springfield firefighters and police in the night from 7 to 8 p.m. And a man accused of second-degree murder and the death of a two-year-old is set for a bond hearing today. Kenneth Davis was charged in 2018 for the death of Kinsley Kilgore. According to a probable cause statement, Kilgore was in a truck when Davis says he was helping a friend move and heard a loud scream and found Kilgore on the ground. Kilgore inside was airlifted to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. The official cause of death was ruled as a homicide. During further investigation, it was ruled Kilgore was hit in the face by an object. Davis is being held on $2 million bond. All right, if you're near a computer, you're probably checking out what's trending this morning. Barney's is filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, actually closing 15 of its 22 stores. Oh, so not really too many that it had left. Exactly. The remaining ones will be in New York and California and Boston. Uh, they've been open more than 90 years. The CEO is citing, quote, challenging retail environment and rent structures that are high relative to market demand. So we've seen several stores go through this. Yeah. Now Barney's also, though, closing 15 stores, though. Okay, well, hopefully they can hang on to some online sales there. Yes, of course. Always an option there and always an avenue for that. So yeah. we'll see. We also need to see what's happening outdoors as we head outside today. Another kind of hot one. Uh, temperatures. Yeah, I noticed that at like 2 in the morning when I left. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty thick out there this morning. Right. Humid. 92 today feels like 98. A couple of showers and storms will be possible. Then that front hangs around through Saturday. So rounds of showers and storms could lead to a setup of locally heavy rain. So stay tuned to that rain forecast. Um, localized flooding would be a concern there. All right, the end of the week there is when you said, eh, we'll see. Kind of drying out by Sunday, maybe, I think. We'll have to keep an eye out on it. All right, that's a long <laughs> way to We got some time. We are taking a live look at some clouds over downtown Springfield. Thanks for watching Daybreak. We'll see you back here in a little bit.